welcome to Dr. Tokleni. Today I'm going to tell you a very interesting story. It is about a loving father and his son. At first I would like you to take a look at this painting. It's beautiful, isn't it? What is the first thing that got your attention? Please remember that. We'll get back to the painting later. Okay, now it's story time. Long, long ago in the island of Crete in Greece, in a dark corner of a complex labyrinth, lies two souls that are barely moving. One of them is a young boy named Icarus. The older man is his father, Daedalus. Daedalus was a skillful architect, craftsman and an artist. And he was seen as a symbol of wisdom, knowledge and power. He's so skillful that everyone mistook the sculptures he made for real people. He is a true genius. When a monster made of half bull and a half a man is eating the people of the kingdom of Crete, its king Minos has asked Daedalus to build a structure to arrest the monster. With his skills, Daedalus invented and built the Labyrinth, a complex mage. From the Labyrinth, no one can ever escape. The mage is so complex that even Daedalus, the person who built it, could not escape from it. Unfortunately, in a tragic twist in the story, shortly after Daedalus has finished building the mage, the king has arrested both Daedalus and his son and put them in the same mage that Daedalus has built. Many days has passed. One day, sad Icarus has asked his father, Papa, where is mommy? When is she coming? The father answered with a dull voice, Mama will come tomorrow, son. The boy then responded, Papa, you said that yesterday. Tell me the truth now. When is mama coming? You know, I'm very hungry. I'm so tired and I'm so scared. I want mama, please. The father, Daedalus, is silent like a stone because he realized he is helpless in that inescapable prison. Many years passed, the boy who is now a teenager asked his dad, Father, why are we here? I have asked you this question so many times, but you never answered. But today, if you don't tell me the truth, I am going to kill myself. So please tell me the truth. Why are we here? Can we ever escape from this place? Listening to his son, Daedalus then realized that he can't hide the truth anymore. He finally has to speak. So he started speaking. Daedalus told his son how skillful he is and how powerful he is. He also explained about the King Minos, about the monster and about the mage and how they are now struck in this place forever. Hearing about this, Icarus started crying. He said, Papa, I do not want to stay here all my life. I want to go out, I want to walk, I want to run and I want to swim. I want to eat and I want to fight like a warrior and simply, I just want to live a normal life. Father, I haven't done anything wrong. Why am I suffering here? Am I here because of your mistakes? What did you do? I want to escape from here. Papa, please do something. Daedalus then told his son that the mage is on an island. And even if they manage to escape from the mage, they will still be stuck on the island because there are no boats and it is impossible to swim to the next island or mainland. Icarus then questioned, Papa, you said you are so skillful. You said you can make many things. So please do something. I want to escape from here. Having no other choice but to save his son from this torture, Daedalus then promised, Son, I am going to take you out of this hell. We will fly high and see the light soon. Soon after that, Daedalus came up with a plan. He has been observing how birds fly and he has been practicing with various designs on how to make wings from the birds for the humans and he used the wax from the candles that the gods used to lighten the prison. Using those wings, both the father and the son plan to escape. When everything is ready, just moments before the escape, Daedalus told his son a very, very important message. He told Icarus not to fly too close to the sun in order to avoid the wax from melting. Icarus said, Papa, I am not a child. I know what to do. Hoping that his son understood his message, Daedalus then stayed silent. Soon after, they started flying. For young Eucharus, the feeling of flying felt amazing. On one hand, he just escaped the prison in which there is a dangerous monster. 
On the other hand, he is flying above the land, above the people, above the mountains, above everything mortal. Like a bee, he could have stroked his wings as fast and as hard as he could. Within moments, his momentum crossed that of a speeding arrow. He could have felt so powerful that he thought the sun cannot do anything to him. He is invincible. He started flying higher. The higher and higher Icarus flew, the further and further he distanced himself from his father. The higher and higher Icarus flew, the closer and closer he moved towards the sun. Icarus is so high that he forgot everything what his father told him. Icarus always heard that the gods are in the sky. Icarus is in the sky now. He is the god in the sky now. At this very moment, when Icarus was so proud of himself and his strength, the wax melted and the wings of Icarus disintegrated. Unable to fly, he plummeted downwards. He dashed like a rocket, but just in the opposite direction. Down and down dropped Icarus into the water in which he drowned. The death of Icarus left his father Daedalus heartbroken. The man who is the greatest carpenter, the man who invented so many tools, the man who made wings from the birds, has now watched his own son drown in front of his own eyes. The story of Icarus officially ends here, but there is still more. The main lessons that we can learn from the story of Icarus and Daedalus are moderation and not to try unnatural things. There is a Sanskrit saying that says, Ati sarvatra varjayat, excess of anything is bad, anything. If it is excess, it's bad. Icarus would have listened to his father and should not have flown so high towards the sun. On the other hand, Daedalus would not have tried to do unnatural things by gluing bird swings to a human being. You see, nature has its own way of doing things and they are all well tested. So don't push anything too much until it becomes unnatural and unbearable. You may be wondering how all of it is related to mental health and how our relatives commenting badly about our jobs, our spouses and our freaking houses. Well, it's all related, my friend. Just stay with me. Now, let's go back to my original topic of this video. What should we do when our relatives or friends say harsh things to us? The answer is very simple. Don't care. Don't give a frog. Because they wouldn't care to help you when you are suffering. In fact, even if you're dead, the whole world will run as usual. The milkman will bring the milk, your relatives will make a tea, they will drink it while watching news about some stupid celebrity. They will go to work, eat and sleep. The birds will keep singing, buses will keep running, no one gives a frog about you or your life. So, why should you care? In fact, this is exactly what the 15th century Dutch painter Peter Bruegel apparently said with his masterwork. The painting you saw in the first place is from Peter. Take another look at this painting. I know, at first the painting appears to be a beautiful landscape. A farmer is plowing the lands, a shepherd is watching over his sheep, a fisherman is fishing, the ships are sailing to unknown lands, and the sun is glorious. Everything seems to be ordinary and is happening at its own regular pace. However, when we direct the eye to a certain spot in the water, just below the ship, we can see the real hidden drama. The legs of Icarus. The same young boy whose story I have told you earlier. Icarus, the boy who became the victim of his own hubris. If we look carefully, we can see his legs as he drowns. In fact, this painting is named The Fall of Icarus. So the whole painting is actually about Icarus. But then the question, why did the painter put the most important part of his painting in such an unnoticeable area? Why? Because the painter wants to give you a message. Because there is no person or no event which is important to the world. The world will go on, no matter what happens to you. You see, the spring will come, the farmer will plow, trading vessels go about their own commercial business, life goes on. For most people, the death of others is of no more importance than the fall of a leaf from a tree. This is exactly the point the painter is making. And this is exactly the point we all should remember. Remember, our relatives, our friends and others, none of them will stop their lives for us. None of them will pay our bills and none of them should. Everyone is fighting their own battles. They have no idea what you are going through. They have no idea how hard you work to get the job and how hard you are working now to keep the job. And they will make comments, stupid comments, whatever. 
just ignore them. They don't deserve your brain bandwidth. Of course, I'm not saying that you just live your life recklessly and abuse yourself and others. All I'm saying is that you should not let others control your happiness. Your life is yours. As long as you have a strong moral compass, you don't need to care about others' opinion. And to have a strong moral compass, to know what is right and what is wrong, look at great people, learn from them, read Gita, get the best of the Bible and Quran, do your karma, follow your dharma and become Rama. You should not worry about the comments of others because if you do so, you will always be a slave of others' opinion and you can never be happy. If they say you are fat, say get lost. If they say your salary is lower than the other guy, say bye. If they brag about their son buying some real estate, Remind them that the grave needs only six feet. If they try to control what you eat, what you dress, what you do and what you think, tell them shut the f- duck up. Tell them shut the duck up. Your life and your happiness, they are yours. Keep them in your control. The only people whose words you need to care about are the people who are willing to take a bullet for you. And often this is just your family and one or two best friends. That's it. For everyone else, say loudly, shut the duck up. Now click on that like, share and subscribe. Thank you. Stay healthy. Matru Devo Bhava. Jai Hind. This video is called Telugu Valla Kosam. Telugu Lo Oka Chinna Bonus. Shri Shri Kari Maha Prasthanam Lo Oka Vishin Chepparu. Nippulu Chimmu Kuntu Ningi Ki Nene Giri Pothi Nibidash Charyan Tho Veeru. Nittaru Krakko Kuntu Nela Ku Nera Ali Pothi Nirdakshanyanga Veere. Ani. అంటే మనం లైఫ్లో ఎంతో సక్సెస్ కొట్టి పైకి నిప్పులు చెందుతున్న ఒక రాకెట్ లాగా వెళ్ళినప్పుడు ఎంతో ఆశ్చర్యంతో మనల్ని ప్రేస్ చేస్తూ ఉండే జనాలే ఎప్పుడైతే మనకి ఏదైనా జరిగి మనం గనక నెత్తురుకుంటూ కింద పడిపోతే నిర్దాక్షణంగా మన మీద కామెంట్స్ చేస్తారు సో శ్రీశ్రీ గారు చెప్పిన వీరు వీరే అటువంటి వారి గురించి మనం పట్టించుకోవాల్సిన పని లేదు నేను ఇందాక చెప్పినట్టు మీకంటూ మీరు ఒక స్ట్రాంగ్ మోరల్ కాంపాస్ ఏర్పరచుకున్నాక అంటే ఏది కరెక్ట్ ఏది రాంగ్ ఏది రైట్ అనేది మీకంటూ మీరు తెలుసుకోవడానికి గొప్ప వాళ్ళ నుంచి నేర్చుకున్న తర్వాత యూ డోంట్ రియలీ హ్యావ్ టు కేర్ అబౌట్ వాట్ యువర్ కొలీగ్స్ సే వాట్ ద పీపుల్ యూ మెట్ సే ఆర్ వాట్ ఎవ్రీబడి ఇన్ ద ట్రామ్ థింక్ అబౌట్ యూ డోంట్ కేర్ జస్ట్ డూ వాట్ యూ థింక్ ఇస్ రైట్ హ్యావ్ ఎ నైస్ డే